Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It's the 23rd of October and a pretty quiet this week. So obviously we had all of the updates last week with Ignite. As always, I have the chapters down below so you can jump to any particular update you care about. New videos this week. So obviously last week's Azure Update was a biggie. So obviously that is that Ignite summary. So there were huge amounts of updates covered in that. Then I created a video on the new Azure Savings Plan for Compute. This is this new billing capability to commit to a one or three years across a whole range of compute services and all regions, they don't have to be specific at all. And I get some variable discounts depending on that exact service, but I have this amazing flexibility. So I really went into what that is and how it differs from the existing Azure reservations. And I did post my blog, uh, about the Ironman World Championship Kona, and I'm actually just about to head out to go and do the Dallas Spartan Ultra. So, a uh, fun weekend for John. So, on to the updates. So, Arc enabled servers now have the ability to have auto extension upgrades. So remember, Arc enabled servers is I have my server operating systems, Windows or Linux, could be in other clouds, could be on premises, and I'm bringing them into that. Azure control plane, both in terms of inventory and tagging, then I can bring those Azure services to those operating systems. If I think about security and backup and configuration and patching, and of course, all of those extensions that also bring additional functionality. So now for eligible extensions, not every extension supports it, but for the eligible ones, it can now auto upgrade them if I opt into that auto upgrade so it's always gonna keep them current. It has rollback capabilities if there's a problem. So it really takes away a lot of the challenges I might otherwise see. On the networking side, ExpressRoute Metro is in development and should preview pretty quickly. And what ExpressRoute Metro is, and also there'll be ExpressRoute Metro Direct, is if you think today when I use ExpressRoute, what I actually get is dual connections, active-active, to two different Microsoft Enterprise Edge routers. That is in the same colo, so the same Edge peering location. So they're currently going to the same one today. What Metro does is I still just have those dual connections to two different MSEEs, but those two MSEEs are now in different colos, but still in the same Metro, so the same city. So there's no difference in functionality. I can still have private peering and Microsoft peering, all different. So everything is exactly the same, except those dual MSEE active active connections, instead of going to different routers in the same colo, now go to routers in two different colos, but still in that same city boundary. So what that obviously gives me is previously, I just had resiliency from maybe a, a local router type problem. Well, now if there's an entire edge colo problem, well, that second connection is to a completely different colo. So I think this is actually gonna become over time as it moves out of development and out of preview, this will become ideally the standard um, for all of these to give me that better resiliency. Azure Virtual WAN has a huge number of updates. So the first was point to site VPN multi-pool support. If I think about someone VPNs in, so a point to site, just my computer into the, the virtual WAN, well you get an IP address. And then from that IP address, I then go and connect to other resources. So what this multi-pool does is now for different groups of users, I can get different pools of IP addresses used. And the benefit there is now I might have other services could say, well, which IP are you coming from? And only give me access if I'm coming from a specific set of IPs. So now different groups of users can have different pools of IPs, which could then be used as part of an overall control to access different resources. They added secure hub routing intent. So once again here, the idea here is that what I can actually do is if you have this idea of routing into region and branch to branch using Azure Firewall or an NVA firewall deployed in the virtual WAN, with just a single click, I can now make it leverage that Azure Firewall, that NVA, just as a bump in the wire. It's using BGP, so there's no misconfiguration risk. Just a very, very simple now ability. 
Have routing, should be preference, not reference, um, has gone GA. So if I think of having multiple routes to something, it might be Express Route Private Peering, it might be Site Site VPN, it might be an SD-WAN NVA. What I can now do is I can actually have a preference for how that routing should take place. I could say, hey, I prefer Express Route, which is the default. I might prefer the based on AS path. I might prefer Site Site VPN. So now I can actually set a preference for that hub-based routing if there are multiple different paths available to me. Um, bypass next hop has gone GA. So it's super common to place a network virtual appliance in a, a spoke of the hub. And then I would configure that NVA in that spoke to have all of the traffic passing through it. But what I can now say is when I add that connection of that VNet into the hub, I can set this ability to say, well, bypass next hop for that virtual network. So thereby other virtual machines, other appliances in that spoke don't get traffic going via that NVA. So it gives me more flexibility in how communication in that spoke VNet containing the NVA actually works rather than everything also being forced into that NVA. BGP peering with the hub. So this is huge. So rather than now having to deploy static routes to my network virtual appliance that I deploy, that NVA can now establish a BGP session with my virtual hub router. They can exchange routes dynamically and it's just going to work. So it's really gonna simplify that all up configuration. They added a BGP dashboard so I can now monitor BGP peers. I can monitor advertise routes. Um, I can understand the routes that are learned from site site VPNs. Um, they also added the ability to now have site site VPN over Express Route. So remember, Express Route private peering is not encrypted. And so, what sometimes you will do is I'll have my Express Route private peering for that dedicated private connection, but then I still want encryption. So then over that express route private peering, I'll establish a site to site VPN, which then does encrypt the traffic. So this now supports that ability to have the site to site VPN over express route, and it can now leverage both AZ and non-AZ site to site VPN gateways. Originally when this came out, it was AZ only. And then they did a bunch of other updates as well. There were custom traffic selectors via the portal, um, highly available VPN client configuration, so I can now configure a secondary profile. There was Express Route circuit connection visibility now, even for connections to a virtual hub gateway. There were some more third party integrations, but I'll link in the description their blog, which really goes into all of those details. On the storage side, Stream Analytics now supports exactly once to Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. Like the Azure Data Lake built on top of Blob. And the whole point about this is now, so we have the stream analytics with huge amounts of throughput coming in. And then what well, Data Lake is a fantastic target for all of that. But in the past, we had to worry about well, what if something was duplicated into that Data Lake. So I would have to create my own logic to check for duplicates and then do some remediation on that. With this new exactly once, the stream analytics job is guaranteeing no data loss and no duplicates being produced as part of the output. So I no longer have to worry about checking for a duplicate and then handling if there was one. SFTP for Blob has gone GA. So this is my regular Azure storage account. I do have to enable the hierarchical namespace so I get true folders, those POSIX style ACLs, et cetera but then it lights up an SFTP endpoint if I want it. So now, hey, if I have some requirement for SFTP, F SFTP, I don't have to set up a completely separate solution. It doesn't integrate with Azure AD accounts. Instead, I create local accounts which either have a password or an SSH private key. I can do container level permissions on that, but now I can just use SFTP to that endpoint and there's nothing else I have to go and set up. Um, Premium SSD v2 also went GA, but I talked about that last week. Remember that now is more like ultra disk. I can individually configure the IOPS and throughput I want. I can dynamically change it while it's in use up to some maximum based on the capacity. 
really the big difference between Ultra now is Ultra has higher IOPS and throughput available, and it has sort of sub half millisecond latency, while premium SSD V2 is really sub one millisecond latency. Miscellaneous. Azure Backup now has ZRS gone GA, so that data that's stored in the vault, instead of just being stored three copies within a certain facility, was now distributed over three availability zones. Those availability zones obviously have that independent power calling networking. So now if there was some building level issue, hey, my, my backup vault is still available, it's still secured. And those Azure Savings Plans for Compute has gone GA. Again, I have the complete video on that. The best way to get started on this is to go and look at Azure Advisor. So Azure Advisor will actually go and look at, well, what is my consumption of the eligible compute services? And then guide on, hey, based on what we're seeing, this would probably be a good commit to help you start saving money. That was it. As always, I hope it was useful. And until the next video, take care.